Let me take one another example. In our Paite Orin Brothers and Domi community I come from, we have a concept called Patua Maina. In Mizo they call it Lo Maina, which in English is called uh, philanthropism. I think the term used in Naga, among Nagas is, uh, is Sobaliba. Sobaliba, which is the norm that governs life in the Murum. In, uh, in, uh, it is called Lo. <clears throat> this this uh, uh, philanthropism governs social life in our tribal society. If a family lags behind in cultivation, for example, they will request their fellow villagers to help them. We call it tatsia. And the villagers will come together for a day or two to help them cultivate the, 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 the crops. If one house caught fire, the villagers will take it upon as their responsibility to rebuild it. When someone dies, the entire community will cease work and mourn with the family, dig the grave together, etc. Now in an urban setting, the, where community control is lacked and people are engaged in diverse occupations, these practices of philanthropism have come under very deep stress. Let us take a simple example of MNRECS. It is a good and popular income generating scheme introduced by the government. One distinctive thing about MNRECS is that while normally the work any kind of government work. The one need to be identified first and the necessary work man uh, sanction later on. Sanction of expenditure is made later on. But in the analysis that process is reversed, employment is guaranteed and awarded first even before the work to be done is identified. Let me tell you one funny story. In one locality in my town, Lanka, there is not enough work for a shop, cards, worker, as the locality is a tight residence, private residential area with no public spaces. It was a few years uh, ago, just after the scheme was taking off in a big way, there were not enough banks to cater to the huge number of job card workers, and there would often be a stampede of people trying to get to the bank. Uh, one need to spend the entire day trying to take out their own money from the land. So this particular community, locality, if people from that locality go to the bank to, to, to take out their money, that day is counted as working day in the subcard system. Because they have to spend the entire day waiting and uh, standing <laughs> in the bank. My point is this. Even apparently very good things like soap cards contribute to the frame of our community solidarities. There is, there is no more need for social work in its original sense. The soap cards take over and people are still not happy. They are zealous of the various authority leaders who are in charge and who seem to grow richer, richer and richer because of the money that comes in this scheme. What do we do about this? In many localities in Lamka town, my town, there is no more enough youths to dig the graves when death occurs. It is not surprising. If a big town and it is a big town and death occurs frequently, people are engaged in diverse occupations, including government service, which need to be prioritized more than the demands of the community, as it happened in the village. As it happens, it is left to the jobless, the daily poor, daily workers and students to carry out all the philanthropic work in the name of the community. There are some localities where the youth organizations took roll call of all the youths present in the grave digging site, for example. The aim is to impose communal discipline and ensure this philanthropic practice continues. How long this kind of practice can continue in the urban setting? remains to be seen. We are, as I said at this water set moment, the state and the market is enclosing our traditional and communal spaces 
and ever quicker space. There will soon be no more yet to be called remote area. How do we adapt to this without losing our core identity and our tribal ideals? Yesterday, one of our 